We cover your losses at CMC Markets. The market, of course, is waiting for any clues this morning that the Fed will take additional steps to boost the economy. But our next guest says expectations have already become muted this week on that count. Diana Avigdor, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital, joins me now. Good morning, Diana. Good morning, Francis. Uh, before we get to all of that, let's just address this sign of forest. I know you heard us uh, just talking about yeah. uh, the cease trading order from the OSC, uh, the fact that they announced that uh, the directors and officers uh, uh, reasonably ought to know uh, that they should have known perpetuate a fraud and uh, when you hear these kinds of things the, the word fraud coming out of the notice and also the cease trading order can you give us a little color on really what that actually means it's done it's finished it's over well, they, I guess they did a cease, uh, cease trading. They want to look into it further, right? Um, there's something there that uh, warrants uh, uh, some kind of investigation. Um, you know, the last few months have been tumultuous for this company, and, uh, and uh, you know, the way it's been trading and the way, um, you know, the news wires were, were coming out and news were coming out, and, and the delay in the response of the officers. And so in the, in the last few months, I, I'm not surprised that, there's finally been a cease, uh, cease trading order. I'm not aware, I don't know, and, and I ha like, like you said, I just heard about this. Um, I don't know if there's new news that, have been found, that, that has been found out and, that, and therefore the cease trading. Um, but, um, you know, I'm surprised if there is no new news. I'm surprised that it came so late. And if there is new, new news, then, then I'm not surprised that it came now. But it's surprising that it hasn't been investigated to a deeper depth a little bit earlier because uh, things have been going on just logistically cease trading order that's the osc that affects here the stock is listed uh in uh, uh on the uh, nasdaq it might even be pink sheets so i'm not sure i think it's the nasdaq in new york does that cease trading order affect the trading in new york i'm not sure i don't okay. think so i think that uh, all uh, regulate all regulators do not work in tandem like for example when they halted um when they halted uh sino forest one day here for uh, for uh, unusual trading uh, volatility or something like that. It actually traded still in New York and lots of volume went through. I think it was the first day that, that um, some news hit the wires. And so a lot of Canadians that did not access, have access to the, to the U.S. market um, were very frustrated for not being able to trade um, and, uh, and the stock moving. And I think it was down like multiple tens of percentage points. Um, that day and it was still trading in New York on high right. volume. Okay, so we'll so. continue to watch that story. Of yeah. course, the other big story is 10 o'clock. We're going to hear uh, Mr. Bernanke's speech uh, right. from uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I understand you, over the course of the week, your expectations have been tempered. Can you put a little color on that for us? Right. So, um, let's, taking it from the beginning of the week, um, all morning notes and all trader calls were, you know, they, you know, they better say something on Friday and the expectations were high. Even even as high as maybe announcing QE3. Um, come Wednesday, by Wednesday, um, the expectations were there's, gonna, there's no way that QE3 is going to be announced. Um, there is no way that it will be mentioned. All that we're expecting now is an outline of policy initiatives that can, that they still have at their disposal because the feeling is that there's no more policy initiative or policy possibilities available at the disposal given the, the economy uh, moving back in a slowing, slower growth pace. Um, <clears throat> I think by today, well, there's no big expectations, especially that um, f uh, September 20th, there is the next FOMC meeting. The expectations that he's going to make an announcement of any kind today ahead of um, before an FOMC meeting um, are low to almost none. That being said, um, a lot of people are scared that um, there's going to be some disappointment coming. So um, everybody's just bracing for that, that there's no disappointment coming. The path of least resistance on the market is down, but the indicators are extremely, extremely oversold and even attempted to come off their lows um, as they're making um, higher lows, what we call it, mm -hmm. um, on, certain, on certain, certain indicators that we're watching. Oil has been making higher lows. So um, interestingly enough, as expectations were getting more muted, <clears throat> excuse me for Bernanke, the market volatility has kind of gotten a little 
smaller. And, and before we let you go, Diane, I want to mm -hmm. just uh, share with everybody this chart you provided us uh, with on equity correlations because they've been rising. If I'm reading this chart right here, it is right. on the far right hand, a big spike mm -hmm. up. Correlations have been rising, not unusual in market panics. Tell us what this tells you right. uh, about the markets. Right. So equity correlations um, at a very intuitive level, they go up as macroeconomic um, fear um, um, overtakes the markets, um, as, um, you know, as, as, as picking stocks becomes less of a relevant point when there's macroeconomic fear out there. But the interesting thing, and the reason I sent you this chart, is because it, it's, it's, it's at a very extreme high. It's now higher than the 1987-88 period. Um, and, you know, that is another indicator of fear and the fact that all stocks move in the same direction. It is really, really high. It is, be, it is um, also the reason why ETFs are so attractive. It okay. is also exacerbated by the HFT activity. Right. Okay. And, you know, Diana, yeah. sorry, I have to cut you off uh, right now. Great idea, great chart. Uh, thank you awfully uh, very much for joining us this morning. Diana Avigdor, Portfolio Manager and Head of Trading at Barometer Capital, will be right back.